For the past couple weeks, IndieGP has been working on developing a little bit of a spec class. Um, some of the funnest races that I've ever done, uh, including DRL, are spec series. It's races where you everyone is flying identical machines. And spec races have been tried before in multi-GP and in different situations. And what happens is the spec kind of ends up convoluted. It kind of ends up being controlled by um, appeasing a bunch of different uh, brands, we'll say. And there's been a bunch of different issues that have resulted in, in my opinion, the spec series not being totally true and becoming a little bit inconvenient at times. That being said, what we've tried to do is take the take the same model that the RC car industry has done and create a much simpler solution. Um, back when RC car racing was at its prime, the Traxxas Slash came out. And this was a, a machine that literally you could buy it off the shelf, put your battery in it, put your receiver in it, and go racing. And that's the goal. That's exactly what we wanted. And for me personally, that was why I was really excited for the DRL Racer 4 Street. You know, it was a drone that everybody might have. And and we could put the same battery, same prop, same tune, everything on it at the same time so that we're all competing with the exact same machine. And that's what I'm hoping is going to happen here with our spec series here in IndyGP. Because what we've done is we've picked the brand new Emacs Hawk 5 Sport Edition, this brand new machine from Emacs, that is going to be... It's 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 going to set that precedent, right? It's it's exactly the same machine for everybody. We're all going to be running the same tune, change your rates, whatever. We're all going to be running the same battery, and that's kind of the experiment that we're going to try at our pumpkin dash race. I'm excited to see how it turns out. I don't really know if it's going to be super successful or not, but the whole point is that it's 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 a sub two hundred dollar drone. Like you can buy it for almost. I think you can buy it for cheaper than you can build it. <laughs> like it's pretty ridiculous. And so for that reason, I'm really excited to get it out, to try it, to to race it against other people. And so the rest of this video is about just taking that drone out for the first time on 3s, experimenting with it, seeing what the racing is going to be like, and then I'm to kind of give some conclusions on what I think the importance of spec racing is, why it's fun, why it's really exciting, and why I think that this is the perfect solution. So Gatebreaker, word on the street is you got yourself a new little toy here. Yeah, I got the Hawk, uh, what is that, the Hawk Sport, Hawk, Hawk Sport uh, plug and play. Hawk 5 Ooh. Sport maybe, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I Eco don't motors. care for the canopy. When you take the canopy off, you take the screws out of the camera. So it becomes loose and you got to fit the camera back in to get the screws in the canopy. That's awful. Other than that. Have you flown it yet? No. Nope. I set up the modes and made sure I reversed the motor directions. Made sure everything was working myself, fail safe and all that stuff. And no, I haven't even flown it with goggles on yet. Those look good. Is it 180 or 189? Or for the, uh, the 189 for the plug and play. Plug and play. So plug your, your own receiver. Yeah, plug your receiver and right. play. Yeah. And it had a wire harness, a three pin regular JST harness soldered to the board. Whoa. So if you had like a, I think the XSR is. There's no holes in the arms. To get to the screws. Yeah, that's weird. Oh, how you mean it? the motor shaft screw? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how does it, like, because normally that sticks out the bottom of it. As you, well, I don't even know, dude. Mm -hmm. Little Cadex, little 20 by 20 stack in it's, there. Uh, it's the Magnum V3 F4 stack. I researched it. $20 VTX. That's about it. The VTX. You got the uh, 36 channel, I think. Yeah, with 37, I think. 37. 1700. Is it 1700 KV? Yeah. You fly success? No, but that's what we're going to use for the spec race. Twenty-five. So, so you bought it for the spec race? No, I didn't. I actually ordered it the day before. It just happened to be that's what we decided uh, on. Yeah, I was like, you. sweet. Are these the props it came with? <laughs> yes. Okay. Those are the 2.8 fit. So they're called Avon or something, right? Is that what we have to Scimitar, fly? Scimitar, I think. No, I think they're called Avon. These, oh. No, there's a newer version than the Avons. They had the 2.8 oh. and the 3.0 pitch in the bag. Oh, cool. I put the 2.8s on because I've flown those it. before. <laughs> Charge. It's a battery. It's so tiny. Oh, okay. It's gonna be a dog. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason that we're even talking about doing yeah. 1700 kV 
motors on three cells that we're basically trying to create a, a spec class for Indy GP. So the whole point would be that we're really slowing down the quads, we're having really good battles. So because this quad is only $189, we're all just gonna buy one, put 3S batteries on it, like big 3S batteries, so we can run like two and a half, two minute heats and like have really good battles. You know, rather than having all these quads spread out over the track, if we all go in on a battery like this, or, well, in a quad like this, I think that would be really fun. There's cheap batteries, cheap quad. You just put your receiver in it and go. Is there any chance you'd let me try it today? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'll fly uh, a battery on it, and then you guys can have a shot at it. Cool. It's got the two batteries, awesome. so we'll just These have to charge them. Yeah. Well, I, I wanted, would love to run a six cell on it, too. I wanted you to run it, and I wanted Jamie to run yeah. both, or even Jamie's Busy. Coming by I know you guys like are faster seven. than me, and you'll, yeah. have, you'll be able to do explain it better how it feels to everybody yeah. Dude, these motors yeah i'd love to try it on both 3s and 6s if you're willing i don't care because then we could like make some dvr and like put ready. out a video and just be like absolutely this is the promote it it's a 189 dollar quad and put the get yeah, fpv I mean, link in there get your affiliates yeah, below I you think know we need to set up a lap timer for you, oh, you yeah. and I jamie and busy or whoever i've got my pub okay and you know that way we have a little bit more to show everybody yeah. all right gabe Brigger just took off on 3s Currently running the track. Oh! Yep. Announcer's curse already. Huh. That poor battery is already sagging out. <laughs> These batteries are old. Doesn't look like too much of a dog though. We're uh, running percent of throttle here. 70, 50 percent. I've been going through it today. Oh. oh! Turtle mode? It's got it, will it? Nope, gonna have to do a stick. Damn, I forgot to DVR that. I DVR'd it, we're good. So this is what I've noticed about these props. Right here about that last inch, they tend to crack and want to shear off right there. Mm. The performance gets really bad once that starts to happen. I bet it will work. Pizzy's going to try to launch VTOL. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Big. Oh. Closer. A... Oh, never mind, never mind. It's not going to work. So this is Gatebreakers. 1700 kV Emacs something series on 3S for NDGP spec. I'm gonna arm now, no, now. On this radio. Most of this looseness is me not using the sticks very well. Actually flies a lot like Racer 4. Yeah, all of the weird overcorrections are me not being used to this controller, 100%.
Oh no. Okay, first impressions of the 3S. Uh, it had plenty of power. Like it was not a lot, obviously. Like it flew a little bit like the Racer 4. Um, it was not, uh, like pulling out of the dive was fine. Going through the slaloms was fine. Um, the battery was not gonna last two minutes, I don't think. And but like I was having trouble with the overcorrections because the sticks, like the throw on yours, is like weirdly long. Yeah. And I can't like I can't pinch his stick ends very well. But uh, yeah, it flew fine. I think that would be a great race to have six of those in the air at the same time. There's another battery if you want to fly. Now it's all you. I don't want to try six S on it though without switching it to a good radio or a radio that I know. You almost killed us. No, I didn't. We've switched his quad over to my radio temporarily. This is the clap sync. And here we go. I think I have a dangler. Yep. See that shadow? <laughs> what PIDs are on here? I'm gonna change them and see if I can make it better because the PIDs are bad in my slightly informed opinion. All right, we're tuning it. Profile, PID. Bump that up a little bit. Wait, what? This is what defaults are? Taking it off. <laughs> oh my god, so much better. To the plastic, to the plastic. All right, that feels way better on this thing. Although the FR Sky latency is messing with me a little bit. Like I could be going faster, but there's these weird circumstances where I'm not like totally in control of the drone. Like I feel like I'm overcorrecting a lot because there's a lot of latency added by Free Sky stock, but um, especially on D16 mode. But uh, yeah, that felt a thousand times better. Um, Felt pretty confident. The uh, the only part I noticed, like the really like really noticed the battery sag was like coming out of the corkscrew and into the dive gate. Like not even coming out of the dive gate, just getting up to it. But uh, yeah, that felt pretty good. I'm a little bit nervous about what happens when we go to a bigger three cell weight wise, but it seemed okay. Yeah, I think it'll be a fun spec. Well, let's do it. So now that you've had a chance to see us flying with the spec, what do you guys think? It's um, it's clearly not the fastest thing, and I think that that's going to be an important factor, right? The goal is for anyone to be able to grab the machine, set up, and race competitively with the rest of the field. And so now everything is going to be tied to racing the best line. It's going to be about experience with the machine, and it's going to be about 
things that are beside gear. It's the, the whole purpose is that when we're out flying, when we're running this spec series, we're going to be competing at identical levels. So, you know, if you're a brand new flyer, you can go out and get this machine and race with us and, and feel like you're more part of the battle. Now, obviously, skills are going to be really important, but it's going to help level out that playing field and create more exciting races. By everything, having everything slower by using only three cell batteries, what we're doing is we're creating an environment where battles are going to happen, where racing is going to be prop to prop the whole way around. Um, the, the machines that we use right now are so fast that any kind of little bit of a change in pace and, and mistake or, you know, whatever, like going through a straightaway or going through around a corner, you know, quads are disappearing in different rates. And if we bring everything back down slow to the same speed, what's going to happen is that everything's going to be dependent on line. And so if somebody takes something a little bit wide and then you take it shorter, the next turn you're going to be right back into that battle. And that's going to make for really compelling, really, really fun racing. One of the best races that I've ever been a part of, and I'll show a little bit of footage from it, was at the NDGP uh, Pumpkin Dash 2018. We basically took our 6S quads and everybody put a 3-inch prop on it. And that slowed everybody down, but we had these epic battles back and forth all the way around the track. Like a 3-inch race on your 5-inch quad. So I've got my Shendrones Gordo here, and it looks absolutely astoundingly hilarious with little 3-inch props on it. And that's the kind of feeling that I want to be generating with this process that we're going through with the Hawk 5. So um, I'm excited to see what happens. We don't know totally how it's going to go. This is going to be our first test run. Um, I'll report back after the race with how everything happened. Um, but uh, in the meantime, thanks for kind of checking out this little video on like the, the purpose of spec class and the, and the reason that we're kind of looking into it and seeing figuring out what is what it could look like. Um, and in the meantime, stay flying.